Hey everybody, welcome to Slikes on Stripes, or Stripes on Slikes on the Jungle Podcast. <laughs> I am here with Ninjeri Boss, uh, P- Vice President of PR at the Waffle House. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's a, it is really is an honor. Um, so in June, uh, Liger Partners is doing, uh, we're celebrating local vices, like, like local made ice cream, local made beer, that sort of thing. And I was thinking that like the ultimate comfort food, especially late at night when you've been out drinking, is <laughs> Waffle House. Well, it's a comfort food no matter what time of day. That's true. It's breakfast 24 hours a day, but we do offer lunch and dinners. Hey, it's one of the best T-bone steak dinners deals in the state, well, in the you country. Aren't, isn't, isn't Waffle House the number one buyer of T-bone steaks we are. in the world, we right? We are. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, you can get a full T-bone dinner for under 13 bucks. That. You can't get that anywhere else. You can't else. get that. Any- and it tastes good. And it, don't okay. you have, like, isn't Wednesday T-Bone Steak Day? Or, we don't or have special. Well, no, we don't have uh, special days. Here's how that works out. Because our restaurant managers are considered owner operators, mm. they can make decisions as to how things flow in their restaurant. So if they want to have a special day or a special meal day, they can do that. But it's not something uh, that we dictate necessarily from the corporate office. Okay. So our restaurants are really part of the communities where we serve because the people who work there live and work in those communities so they have a real good ear to the ground so they know what works i've noticed that like when like i literally have a waffle house on either side of me about a mile down the road okay well you're and lucky so we'll decide which one we want to go to mm-hmm. by oh do i feel like talking to this person today or do i want to talk to this person And that's what it's all about. I mean, that's really what makes us unique. Yes, the food is important. We want to make it good every time, good food fast. But it's really about the relationships. And that's what makes us stand apart from other restaurants. The things that our servers, we call them salespeople, and our cooks, who we call grill operators, the things that they do in terms of getting to know the customers, customers getting to know them, it's almost as if they are related. They do become family. Uh, the Waffle House becomes a waffle home, and a lot gets shared. It, it does. A lot I gets shared that. there. Uh, births, graduations, unfortunately, deaths. Um, a lot of things in life happen there. Well, um, the our associate who set up this interview for us, Nancy, she actually got engaged at a Waffle House. I heard. 35 and years ago. And I was trying to get her to be willing to share her story with us. Internally, oh. internally, nothing, nothing to go out on the, you know, the big media. But she'll share it with we, everybody. <laughs> we'd love to be able to share that. Well, because those things, a lot of those things happen. Yeah. And it's the people in the restaurants that they love to hear that the things that they do, the little things that they do, really make a difference. I I love the. Um... Was it Veterans Day or Memorial Day where some of the restaurants uh, set out a, a table? It would be Memorial Day. Decorated for Memorial right. Day. That's uh, right. For some a, people do for it for Veterans Day. Yeah, some people will do it for Veterans Day, but Veterans Day is really for those who came living. back. Yeah. Yes, the living soldiers, men and women uh, who are currently serving or who are retired, with Memorial Day being where we remember and memorialize those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. So at the corporate office, we have a table and oh, wow. then some of the restaurants as well. Well, our founders, Joe Sr. and Tom Fortner, were both in the military. Fantastic. So. so my whole show is about the ROI of creativity. Now, you might not, some people might not think of creativity when they think of Waffle House, but my view of creativity is just doing something in a different way. And Waffle House is so different from any other franchise restaurant out there to where like I'm actually I'm eating actual food like this is actually potatoes this is actually a t-bone steak these are eggs that's the bread that I buy at home y'all just make it so much better (laughs) well thank you thank you I mean that's really the concept you eat on real china 
Mm -hmm. Uh, We hand wash the silverware and then put it through a sanitizer. I mean, all of these things that we try to do so that you feel at home. For some people, that may be the most orderly home feeling they have. And so we work really hard to make sure that the customer walks away feeling good about their experience. Uh, It's been a little trying lately, but generally that's our concept. So real china, real silverware, uh, real food that we order in weekly, sometimes twice a week, maybe even three times a week, depending on how busy the restaurant is. And we cook it right in front of you. So there are no secrets. The kitchen is our front room. You know, there is no, there is no living room yeah. or dining room and then, you know, the back room. No, you're right there. You can see it. We have customers who can call their own meals. They know the Waffle House lingo and they could call their meals if they wanted to. That's awesome. Just like sitting at the counter and yelling like, oh, uh, yeah, slice, die, stop. Yep, that they could do that. And in fact, because they can see their the grill operators cooking the food, Sometimes you'll get that. Remember now, a little light on the seasoning. Remember now, a little light on that. I've heard that. So people yes, will talk back uh, mm-hmm. to their grill operators <laughs> and to their servers, their salespeople. It's, I mean, it's just a wonderful combination. It's all friendly with the idea of being family friendly, uh, that children could come in and enjoy, families could come in, you know, lovers can come in, single people can come in. We have had from business people to the high school gym teacher eating at the same time in the restaurant, striking up a conversation at the high counter or the low counter. Uh, We've had uh, track teams, baseball teams, you name it, show up after a game. It's usually a place that after the football game on a Friday night, a lot of the high schoolers will come out and spend time with us. And what's really amazing when I was talking about those relationships is that it will start with people bringing their children a lot of times. Then the next thing we know, those children are coming because they're in college, you know, they're coming by themselves without their parents. And then before you know it, they're bringing their children. And then the grandparents are coming with their grandchildren. So it's just a really unique opportunity to feel, like I said, a waffle home. And, And everyone kind of, if you go enough times, you get your usual order. You figure it out. Yeah. Like I like in my hash browns, I like all the veggies. All the veggies. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's I don't I don't want I don't want it covered or smothered. Wait, no. Oh, smothered onions. is smothered onions. is the onions. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I don't want the gravy or the cheese. I want, and no ham, right? I like the ham, but most times I just go because I'm getting bacon anyway. Ah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm always well, gonna get there, bacon. There, there are some people, you know, you get the bacon, you get you get the ham also in the hash browns. Yeah. You'd be surprised. I like the a and the eggs on top of the hash browns. Ah, okay. Over easy. Okay. So yeah. that's kind of like almost like one of our hash brown bowls. That's yes. something that our uh, salespeople came up with. Well, you, you probably watched my order and made a oh, bowl out of it. Made a bowl out that's of it. That's what okay. I assume happened. Okay. Well, we'll we'll give you that one today. <laughs> Uh, and so what are some other um, creative things that Waffle House does to set themselves apart from their competition? Well, one of the things uh, is that, like I said, the, the atmosphere of the restaurant is really the uh, personality of the manager and their team. And so we like to call it pixie dust. We want folks to walk in and just automatically feel like, oh, you know, they can take a load off. They're going to have a good time. They're going to have a good experience. The tunes may be playing on the jukebox. That's another thing that's different. Um, we have a ton of Waffle House songs that are just about things about Waffle House. They're yeah. also on the jukebox. You have a label, don't we you? We do. You Waffle, Waffle House, House Records. House Records. That's right. Can I get the story behind that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's an official version and there's an unofficial version, but uh, I think really how it started is Joe Jr., who's our current chairman, his first wife was a singer, and uh, she would do songs about Waffle House, and that (laughs) kind of grew into, well, how can we make this something really fun? So there were a lot of, um, you know, it's a family affair, kind of Waffle House family. There's Raisins in My Toast, the Happy Birthday song. I mean, there's all kinds of, you name it, songs about our grill operators, songs about our salespeople. I mean, there, some of them are really silly. Some of them are just plain fun. And uh, some of them sound like 
you know, songs you would hear on the radio. So there's a great variety of, of music there. And, and you have an awards show, don't you? We have had for the past three years what we call the Toonies, which are the Toonie Awards. And really what it is is showcasing the choices of our customers, the top played songs, the most requested, uh, the favorite, and then maybe broken down into uh, country, R&B, rap, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a really fun way for us to recognize the music that our customers love, be able to give a little love to some of the artists who create that music. Uh, we're looking to do something a little different with that this year. We're still not quite sure what that's going to look like, but it will be different. Well, you had some big names in the past as presenters. We have. Like, we have. Wasn't there Chris Stapleton? Chris or? Stapleton, back-to-back -back winner for the top played song. Wow. Yeah, back to back. Uh, we did uh, some Living Legend Awards. Uh, we've had, I mean, you name it, there's been a lot of big names. We've been very thankful and grateful that they've been willing to participate. This year, of course, it, we had to film it. Some of it was, was live. Some of it was filmed ahead of time. And then it was done virtually, of course. Uh, people wouldn't able, weren't able to attend like they yeah. have in the past. But it, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, Billboard picked up on it. They did some stories about it. So, like I said, we're ever evolving, trying to figure out ways to have fun with the brand, uh, to have fun with our customers, and be able to showcase, like I said, their personal choices in terms of music. I, I want to see that. Like, I want to push it out, like, live to the world. I want to help out with that. <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. I'll even be setting up chairs if you want me to, but I'm much better at marketing. At marketing. <laughs> well, you never know. I might have to call you on that. Um, like I said, we're, we're, we're toying around with some ideas, how to make some changes. One of the things that was pretty unique about the award show is that we tried to recognize an up-and-coming artist and give them a platform to be able to share their music. So we're looking at maybe doing something a little more with that and trying to provide a platform in that way. Like I said, we're still looking at the ideas, so when I know a little more, I might give you a call, figure out how we can work it out. Yeah, we can, we can, you can interview them in here. <laughs> well, I'd have to talk to our president of Waffle House Records. <laughs> there is a president of Waffle House Records. <laughs> there is. There I is. love that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I definitely want to interview him, too. Her. <laughs> Nadine uh, oh, Gillespie. Her. Yes, Sorry, her. Nadine Gillespie. Yes. yes, she is our president of Waffle House Records. She gets unsolicited music all the time. We don't generally accept unsolicited music, yeah. but, I mean, she does get that. She works really hard year-round planning for how we can um, showcase that part of the brand. So. And uh, yeah, there's even music videos out there. Of there are there are some music videos. Um, there are a lot of videos that aren't authorized by Waffle yeah, House. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna just skip over those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there have been a few, and we've been talking about it might be time to do another one. So we'll see. Yes, actually, it, this feels like the time of reopening of. It's not just a spring, it's the spring of after COVID. Yeah, and well, what I find really fascinating about uh, Waffle House is the Waffle House Index, mm -hmm. where, you, where you, if there were a disaster happens, uh, somebody from FEMA calls up and says, hey, how's your Waffle House? Are they, are they doing half? Uh, <laughs> are they are doing half menu, full menu? You guys open, and that gives you a great gauge of what the damage is in that area. Right, right. And um, I think for the first time in this past year, I saw some closed Waffle Houses. Yes. Actually, the Waffle House Index is not ours. Craig Fugate, who is the former FEMA director uh, during Barack Obama's presidency, uh, he actually coined that term back in 80, was it 84? That long ago? Or was it 2004? I get it. I get it backwards. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> right before Katrina. Let's let's put it that way. So yeah, before Katrina, yeah. so that would have been 2004 because Katrina was 2005. Can you believe it's been that long? That's wow. crazy. It's amazing. Yeah. But um, so it's not really ours. But when COVID hit, and you know, people, we no one knew what to expect. And there were, you know, cases happening everywhere and governments scrambling to figure out what to do, local governments, state governments, the federal government. Uh, and so once 
closures started happening, being mandated in different states or by different localities. You know, we're in 25 states, so we had to keep track of every state that we're in, including the cities, uh, because some of the cities would do something different than the state would do. So we had to keep track of all of that. And unfortunately, in the midst of that, the bottom just fell out. When we yeah. could only do to go only, we, like so many other restaurant uh, companies, found ourselves having to figure out how to do something different. Um, those who were already set up with the to-go lanes, they already had it going on. So we lost a tremendous amount of customers in that first month to two months. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went from recognizing, you know, like 90% uh, revenues down to 20 or 30%. Wow. And as a result of that, we just didn't have, wh where there's no customer traffic, there's no money coming in. And where there's no money coming in, there's no way to be able to pay our servers and our grill operators. So, I mean, we had to make some very difficult decisions. The first time in the history where we ended up shutting down somewhere between 700 and 750 stores, we lost some uh, 30,000, 32,000 people uh, in the process. Some were fur furloughed, some left on their own accord because they just couldn't get the hours they needed. Uh, some s stuck with us and where we could keep a portion of the business open and try to keep it as healthy as possible. That was the idea. And ride it out for however long, because no one knew how long this journey was going to be. You know, it was a journey no one had taken before. The idea was to keep the business alive enough so that when things turned around, we could quickly reopen, bring our people back. It's a lot easier to start from, you know, halfway there as opposed to all the way from scratch. Yeah. Which a lot of restaurants had to do. They just completely shut down. Yeah. Uh, some of the smaller. So for us, it was really painful because, like I said, even though people look at us as a chain, we look at ourselves as a bunch of independent community restaurants under one umbrella. Yes. Uh, because every store has a different personality. The teams are what really makes those stores. And so when a community started hurting because, you know, customers, rightfully so, were scared. We all were. Weren't coming out. Um, we had to shift our resources. But one of the things that was really unique, and you want to talk about creativity, our teams, the people who work at Waffle House are extremely creative and resourceful. They came up with ways to keep the business going that helped us as we were trying to figure out overall uh, what we were going to do because we are 90%, a little more than 90% company owned. We're not really franchise driven anymore mm -hmm. and haven't been for several decades. So we had to figure out what, what could we do. They came up with, they made their own drive throughs they bought pop-up tents, they set them up in the driveways, uh, in, the, in the parking lots and, and created drive throughs They did curbside service. I mean, we had people coming and parking, and bringing their pickup trucks and pulling down the tailgates and putting chairs out. And those were <laughs> makeshift tables. Uh, we had them doing pop-up. They came up with pop-up restaurant ideas where they would announce they were going to be in a neighborhood. That did well. We also yeah. did, uh, you know, the Adopt-A-Meal program for the first line, our first responders, so that folks working in the hospitals, at fire departments, police departments, all those people who could not work from home because they were taking care of us, taking care of the communities, we got the community involved so they could feel like they still were a part of a larger community, trying to give them some semblance of normalcy yeah. by supporting the people who were taking care of them. So there were lots of creative ideas that came along. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and I was impressed when my father-in-law was down in Valdosta and he was running a, a cash register off his car battery oh, yeah. during a hurricane. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we find a way. Once, you know, we find a way. And, and particularly in natural disasters, you know, we track, particularly hurricanes, because you have a lot of, a lot of lead-up time. So we start tracking them early and we start making plans we have a um, crisis response notebook that every store has that tells them what to do, when and where and who to contact. We set up a response team uh, in the corporate office that works directly with those out in the field to coordinate efforts, uh, reopening if need be, getting generators if need be, you know, figuring out what's going on with the water supply. We have special menus for if you don't have water. 
if you don't have electricity or if you don't have gas, we got them all. We can figure out what to do and still serve something. Uh, once the danger is over and it's safe for people to come back out, we want to be there. I mean, the line crews are going to be out there working. They need some place to eat. First responders, law enforcement, they need some place to eat. They've been out all night uh, trying to keep people off unsafe roads. And then the community starts venturing out and looking at the damage. And many times they don't have electricity. And after you know a, a day of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, they're ready for something hot, whether it's a, a sausage biscuit, a bacon biscuit, or whatever it is we can put together, that's what we'll do. And, and that, that brings me back to it's not just comfort food, it's just comfort. Like in, in your, when you're in a stressful time mm -hmm. or, uh, and you just need a hot meal, I mean, Waffle House is always open. It's always there. It's always been open. It's a 24-hour concept. We have three different shifts, three different teams at each restaurant, which can be anywhere from three to seven people or more on a shift. Right now, it's a little tough. Uh, the customer demand is outside the door. It's enormous. It's huge. People are ready to get out, mm -hmm. and they're venturing out more and more, feeling a little more safe. Um, we're Probably, we're still not done with COVID. We know this, uh, but if, at least it seems like there's a, a turn around the corner with the vaccinations coming in. So we're seeing lots of customers, but we are not seeing quite as many of our regular workers. Um, we've had those who've stood by us all the way through. Well, I can't say enough about them. We couldn't do it without like people them. People who have been working there for decades. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're there. But there are some people, you know, with kids not being able to go to school, <clears throat> there were a huge chunk of our um, employees who had to stay home because they had to monitor their kids who were doing this new online virtual every day, five days a week or more. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, it's one thing to do it once or twice a week or a month. But every day for an entire school year, some of them, it was, it was really interesting. So we it's lost, tough. yeah, we lost folks there. We lost folks who are caring for people who are immunocompromised, uh, folks who had their own conditions, health conditions that they were concerned about because no one really knew how uh, it would affect them. So, I mean, we had a lot of that. And some of them are still coming back now. And they're just, I mean, we're not the only ones. There's, every industry has been touched. The restaurant industry, the hospitality industry, probably more so than a lot because those places were the first to be shut down. Um, not quite sure what makes um, a Home Depot or a or Lowe's an essential business over a restaurant <laughs> where when we know that pre-COVID, about 50% of the calories consumed in this country was done outside of the home. Um, but hey, we didn't make those decisions. We just tried to roll with them yeah. and be there for the community and the community has been there for us. So we're trying right now to do the best we can. Um, it's not necessarily maybe the Waffle House you're used to. We had to learn to do some things that we were not so good at, like shut down or close <laughs> for the night. Yeah, <laughs> or, we had to actually use the locks that use are on the, the locks. door. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> we actually had to get keys made for some of them. I mean, we just never locked the doors. Because it's never closed. It's never closed. Yeah. And it's, you know, and unfortunately, I know that there's a lot of angst out there as people are excited to get back to the things that they remember and that they've been wanting to do for a year. And then they get there and, you know, half of the restaurant might be closed or that shift is closed for the day or the restaurant is closed until the next day. And we, you know, it's difficult. We have uh, tried to communicate as best we can with our customers to just, you know, have a little patience with us. We're working really hard to try and give them the same customer service, just with fewer people. And sometimes we don't know what that number is going to be until the shift starts. So yeah. the call, the decision to, oh, well, we may just be able to do to go only might happen right at the start of the shift. And it's, uh, it's interesting how the business strategy of Waffle House has really paid off. Like you haven't been overextended. You've just grown so slowly that, okay, I can weather this storm now. Mm -hmm. And now we're back into it. And just like you've helped other people weather the storm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally. Slow and steady wins yeah. the race. Uh, it's never been about let's go, 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 go and populate all 50 states. 
it's really taking a measured look. We want to get better before we get bigger. Uh, and that's always been uh, Joe Jr.'s motto is we're not trying to we're not trying to outflank everyone. Let's <laughs> let's do what we do best. Get it down to a science where we are. Um, so that's why there are more restaurants in the southeast than anywhere else in the country. And I know that there are petitions all over in different places, yeah. D.C. and Chicago, and people wanting us to come there. A lot of people who used to live in the South have moved to those places, and they, they want a little comfort from home. But unfortunately, we're not there and don't Cal know when. California's oh. begging for it. I know, I know. <laughs> but, you know, one of the things we look at is, man, if we had been in California they're just now really opening up and yeah. still not even open 100 percent. I don't no, think in the, some places. I think next week they're going to open the whole thing. Yeah. You know, and if we had had the majority of our stores there, I mean, Probably. we would have a totally different story. Exactly. So, you know, every state did what they think I, I think what they felt was best at the mm -hmm. time with the information that they had, and it affected so many people in so many ways. I mean, the virus itself, of course, is one of these things that you can't see. Um, so many people, lives lost. I, I lost an aunt. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah, and I know that had she been able, <clears throat> excuse me, to hang on, she died in January. She had been. She was one of the people who did everything right. Stayed home, wore a mask. You know, had stuff delivered at her door, contactless d delivery, all of that. But she was also a city council member in a small um, town in South Carolina, and there was a grant that she had written all for, the money had come in, and she felt so passionate about wanting to make sure that everything was done properly and the money went where it was supposed to go, that she went to one of the last city council meetings that she attended. She wore her mask, and within two days of that meeting, she got really sick. Oh, no. She went to the hospital. They told her she had pneumonia, but they didn't test her for COVID. <laughs> so I, I don't know, you know. Mm. And long story short, she just got sicker and sicker and then eventually had to be put in the hospital and then... She hung on for a little while, and, and then she was gone. I mean, so a lot of stuff happened. Um, so you had those things to deal with, and then you had the loss of jobs for folks. You know, we're trying to be supportive of our people. We try to do as much as we could, you know, making sure that they you know, even gift cards, uh, trying to keep people on health care, even though they were furloughed, you know, all kinds of things that we were doing just to let people know, hey, we stand behind our workforce. So... Yeah, and that and that kind of care that you give your employees goes a long way because, you know, like you said, a lot of them are still with you and hung they're, with you. They're still with yeah. us, and even though it's been tough staffing, as it is all across the country for all kinds of businesses, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're working uh, double shifts, overtime, you know, they'll stay a couple, of, a couple of extra hours over their shift just to make sure that the next folks, set of folks come in. I mean, they do a lot because they care about their customers. I mean, and they have to earn a living. They're, they're, they have bills to pay. The bills don't stop because COVID said we got to shut businesses down. So we were trying to be very creative to try and make sure that we kept faith with the workforce. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you um, spent some time in, in one of the locations, didn't you? I did. I actually didn't just magically appear on the scene in PR here. I, this is a third career for me, and hopefully it'll kind of be my swan song. I'm, I'm kind of hoping. I've, I've done a lot of things. I started off in journalism and was a reporter for a number of years, and then I went to law school and practiced law for 12 years. And I returned to Georgia, which is where I grew up, DeKalb County, and uh, didn't want to practice law anymore, didn't quite know what I needed, wanted to do or needed to do. My husband was still in Michigan. He had a couple more years to finish out with his job that he was doing before he could early retire. So I was down here with our son, getting him situated. You know, my, all my family is here. And uh, I needed something that was going to be flexible. Tried a couple of, you know, home-based businesses. Didn't quite work out the way I wanted it. And I just decided, what the heck? You know, I knew Waffle House servers. They make very good money, excellent tips, and, you know, sometimes making more than I was making <laughs> as an independent contractor or attorney. So I said, I'll, you know, I'll apply and do that for a little while until I could figure it out. Um, you know, it was a tough time coming back into the market in 2012. Yeah. A lot of resumes that went out, a lot of answers that didn't come back. And then the ones that did were thank you, but, you know, we're doing something different. 
So I applied, and the same day that I applied, because you have to put your resume down, so all that stuff's on my resume. You know, I clerked in federal court, worked at a law firm, all of that's there. <laughs> they called me up and said, hey. Um, <laughs> Did you apply to the Do you right know one? about our management program? <laughs> and I'm saying, what management program? You know, <laughs> blind to the, there were window clings. I didn't pay attention. And yeah. so, I mean, I can imagine if I didn't pay attention, there are probably other people out there who, just didn't pay attention uh, to the what has become a wonderful career opportunity. So I switched my application to management. I went into the management training program. I started in March of 2016, finished in June of 2016, and actually was awarded the store where I trained, which is something they don't usually do, but they do in some circumstances. So the people I had trained with, then I became their team leader, not their boss, their team, team leader. leader. Nice. <laughs> we got to, we work together. We work as a team. I mean, it doesn't work if we don't work as a team. Mm -hmm. The heavy handed, you know, I'm standing up here, you go do what I tell you. It just doesn't work in a Waffle House. We all got to be able to clean toilets and sinks and, and wash dishes uh, and do like all every small like business, every small yeah. business. And that's why we say each Waffle House, they're, they're just a small community restaurant. We don't see ourselves as this really big chain. We just happen to have one big umbrella that we kind of <laughs> hug everybody in together. When I owned my own agency, I was like, well, yeah, I own the agency, but I also take out the trash. Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, that's, that's what I did. I was a unit, we call those unit managers because they have one unit. That's what we call a restaurant. And then I was eventually promoted to district manager where I was responsible for three restaurants. So the success of three unit managers and their teams trying to help them be successful like my team and I had been. And I did that for only a few months. It was about six or seven months when an opportunity appeared in the training department. You'd be amazed at the amount of training materials. It's one of the other things that sets, up, uh, sets us apart from a lot of other restaurants. Is have we like have an extensive training big program. training room in corporate? Or? We have, yes. Like we an yeah. auditorium almost? Oh. Well, not quite an auditorium, <laughs> but we do have a pretty good sized room that has some retractable walls that can be made bigger or smaller, depending on the need. But we have Waffle House University, it was where our managers would go right before they were put into their units as a you know final entrance into the uh, Waffle House system, if you will. We've changed that around a little bit, but we still have a Waffle House University. It was suspended, as you could imagine, yeah. over the last year, but we're looking at getting it started back again. So that's for management. But we also have extensive training materials that we provide for our sales persons, those are our servers, our grill operators, who are our cooks, uh, to try and help them, one, learn the Waffle House way. There is a book called The Waffle House Way. <laughs> and in it, it explains how to, in production, how to create every single item that we offer is spelled out in excruciating detail <laughs> in some instances. But it's a lot of fun, and there are a lot of good customer service tips, everything to try and help the people be as successful as they could be. Uh, because this is the job that they've chosen. This is the career that they've chosen. We also have steps into management now, offering um, second shift and third shift supervisors, kind of like assistant managers. So people who are hourly employees who want to do more, take on more, more responsibility and want to learn kind of what is that management thing, but they're not really ready to go into the management training program, that's an opportunity for them to kind of wet their whistle a little bit and see if it's really for them. And so we've just tried to offer as many career opportunities for people. There are folks who've been with us 40 years, 35 years, and, and I'm not talking just managers. These are servers, these are grill operators. Mm -hmm. uh, they have put their kids through college on Waffle House earnings. They have bought homes and cars and done all kinds of things. And one of the other unique things is they've gotten into the stock program. We have uh, stock, which is we use it, hopefully most people use it as a retirement opportunity, but we but get to own, private stock. it's private stock, mm -hmm. it's not trade, we're not a public company, yeah. we're a private company, but what it is is that the Rogers family decided they wanted to make sure that people had an opportunity to own a part of the business where they work. You know, people work differently when they know that they own something. It's not just 
a place that they show up to, okay, do my couple hours and leave, you know, you start being more concerned about, you know, do we really need to give that extra ketchup bottle or packet in that to go? You know, do we need to give them 20 (laughs) versus five? Just little (laughs) things like that uh, in terms of small business economics. it, It really makes a huge difference. And a lot of these folks retire. Some of them retire in the millions um, wow. Some of them retired in several hundreds of thousands. I mean, it just depends on if they left the money there. It's the same as anything else. Compound interest over time. Don't take mm-hmm. it out. But it's also there for people when they have an emergency, if they need to uh, sell it back to the company and, and take the cash and do what they need to do. So it is a wonderful opportunity. So you went into training. I went into the training department, yes. And one of the things, because I love coaching, I love being able to help people see their full potential. Those who really want to take on more, want to do more, and just need someone to help them get there. That was one of the parts of my job that I just loved. And so when that opportunity came open in the training department, I said, hey, what greater way to be able to do that on a larger scale than in the training department for the entire system? So I came on board uh, as a special projects coordinator in the training department. And then within three months of my being there, the public relations position became open when our longtime uh, director decided to move on to greener pastures. He, he's now with a public relations firm in Tennessee, closer to his family and his wife's family. So they're able to do that. And um, I was encouraged to consider applying based on my background. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, you know. It's, it's like a, a table full of resumes, and yours is like the neon green <laughs> one saying, like, this is the only one you need. Well, there were, you know, so they went through the process. There were, there were others who applied, and in the end, it ended up being me. And I was, you know, thrilled to take on the, the helm of that in January of 2020. Because um, I went in training department <laughs> in August of 2019. So in 2020, January 13th, I'll never forget it. I went on as the director. And uh, then a month and a half, two months later. All oh, hell broke loose. It did. Because at first they were like, <laughs> I'm like, so what am I supposed to do? What am I doing? You know, what are we doing here? And so I did a little, little this, little that. And next thing I know, we were in full crisis mode. It was, you know, all hands on deck, you know, real serious. Um, not a whole lot of laughing happening yeah. during that time. So where we could have a little levity, we tried. But now it was really serious. As I said, the pandemic was nothing, is nothing to, to sniff about. Or, we're still in it. Yeah, we're still in it. Mm-hmm. And hopefully as more and more people um, become vaccinated and we can get to what they consider herd immunity, that we will see this be no more than a flu that comes every year that we have something to treat it with and people don't get really sick that's what i'm hoping but that's that's what we're all praying for yeah yeah so but it's been wonderful to see our friends come back in and uh, supporting the restaurants that they love and supporting the servers and the uh, cooks that they love um that's been really neat getting back to that so do you have any uh, special events coming up or anything you want to share with everybody about what's going on at waffle house well you know we every year we're not heavily event Engage. We will do activations as, as they come available. You know, like I said, this last year, pretty much we've not done much of anything except try to keep the stores open and keep people uh, employed. Um, so, but coming up, we always have the National Waffle Week, which coincides with our anniversary around Labor Day. So we'll be celebrating 66 years this wow. year. Wow. Of doing, of doing this thing <laughs> called Waffle House. Yeah. I will definitely get some waffles on Waffle Week. Yeah. So we usually have um, we usually have some special activities that we do. We're still trying to work out the details, you know, coming out of the deep thaw of we're not, you know, austerity, not spending any kind of extra on things like that to, okay, what can we do? What makes sense? You know, we're still not trying to have large crowds. We want people to feel comfortable in anything that we do. So we're still, you know, wrapping our heads around that. So that's coming up in September. Hmm. I might have some ideas. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the, thing, the thing about me is uh, you give me a puzzle, uh, a brain puzzle, I'm going to work on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, our wonderful manager, marketing manager, Katie Beam, 
uh, has a lot of experience That's doing correct. that. And so she's been working hard with her team, coming up with ideas. So if you want to reach out to her, I'm sure. Cool. And you're, you're on the uh, on the socials, so Waffle House. We're on the social. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. And we just added TikTok. Really? Yes. <laughs> I really want to see the Waffle House TikTok. I'm going to be a follower right after this. Okay. Yeah, yeah they just started it, I think, uh, just got on in the last week, and they've been working hard trying to come up with material for that. So that'll be interesting. Our social media manager is also the president of Waffle House Records, Nadine. So Nadine. she's been working really hard um, trying to get some stuff, make it interesting for our Waffle House fans out there. And... Uh, and you're looking for for uh, servers, right? Or well, we are always hiring. Don't okay. get me wrong; the pandemic didn't change that. We're always hiring, but now even more so, perhaps yeah. than than before. So, We're hiring all positions. We're looking for people who want to be salespeople. That's the servers. People who want to who love to cook. Um, become grill operators. There are three different levels of grill operators, which three different levels of pay scales. I mean, there's an opportunity there. We're also looking for people who are interested in going into management and running a restaurant, learning how to run a restaurant from the front side that, that the customers see with production and customer service all the way to what happens in the back room in terms of ordering uh, and taking care of the needs of the business and the um, you know, profit and loss, that kind of thing. That's a great education, too, yeah. especially if you wanted to move on later on in life and then and open your own restaurant. You know how to do well, it. Well, hopefully they'll want to stay <laughs> with us uh, yes, of and course. move up and yeah. go from unit to division <laughs> and from di uh, unit to district, which is three, district to division, which is nine, division to region, which is, you know, close to 20 something, and then on up till you get to executive vice president where you have over 300 restaurants. That's amazing. That you are responsible for and really working with your management team to help all of those different teams represented by the different restaurants be successful. That's fantastic. Yeah. And Jerry Boss, thank you so much for coming on this, on my podcast. Thank you for having me. I, I love sharing Waffle House story, Waffle House news. It's an exciting place. It's America's place to eat and America's place to work. Thank you very much. And this has been Stripes with Slyke on the Jungle Podcast at Liger Studios. Thank you very much. Thank you.